on this week's KSP News Show. In an earlier than usual show, I go over some of the new parts for 1.1 that I missed in last week's episode. And KSP coming to Wii U? All that and more on this week's KSP News Show. Reporting live from the Kerbal Space Center, it's your host, Jim Lee Kerman. Good morning, evening, and afternoon, my fellow Kerbinauts. My name is Jin Lee Kerman, and welcome back to this week's slightly earlier than usual KSP News Show. I just want to start off, if I do sound a little bit different to how I usually do, um, it's because I'm recording this, like, really early in the morning for me. It's like half eight in the morning, and I don't know, even know why I'm up this early, but... I think it's because um, Kerbal Space Program was in fact announced for the Wii U at PAX last night. I literally woke up to the news and so I thought, screw it, I'm going to make a video on it because, well, this is is pretty good news, I think. So I think I'll get on with that story straight away. Now, in case you're not already aware, an event called PAX is currently going on somewhere. I'm not quite sure of the location, but there's sort of a sub-event within PAX called Nindies, which is basically a load of indie games that are coming uh, to Nintendo consoles, as far as I'm aware. And Kerbal Space Program has been announced as one of those indie titles. More specifically, KSP will be coming to the Nintendo eShop on the Wii U, and Kerbal Space Program dropped a trailer at PAX for the actual thing. I will leave a link in the description down below for you to go and watch the trailer. It's a little bit long to include it in this video, and it includes mostly PC footage by the looks of things. I don't think any of the actual footage in it is actual Wii U footage, because I think it's too early in development to actually, um, to actually have that sort of thing in there. And I know what? Nintendo's like with copyright, so I'm not going to put it in this video, instead I will link it down below for you guys to go and watch on Nintendo's channel. It was also followed up with a release on the forums saying, In 2011, during the earliest days of Kerbal Space Program, lead developer Felipe Falanga, sorry if I butchered that name, stated that we'd be bringing the game to as many platforms as we could to make it compatible with one. I'm not sure what that is, it's a reference to something. Today, we're holding true to that statement by announcing Kerbal Space Program will be coming to the Wii U platform. Kerbal Space Program for U Wii U will be ported to by Flying Tiger Entertainment alongside the already announced ports to PlayStation 4 and Xbox One. The Wii U is a unique platform that will allow us to include millions of Wii U owners worldwide in our passion for space and our game. We'd also like to thank Nintendo for giving us the chance to do so. Now, a lot of people are going to be upset about this, I guess yes, because the Wii U isn't exactly considered like the most powerful console in the world and stuff like that, but I actually think that this may be the best um, system to actually play KSP on aside from the PC. Obviously KSP was designed for PC and stuff, so it's naturally going to play out better on PC. But with the gamepad of the Wii U, I think rocket building is going to be so much easier than on the Xbox One and the PS4. I have a friend who owns a Wii U, and I know he is also very, very interested in space as well. However, he doesn't exactly have the most powerful PC in the world. And so, um, this coming to Wii U, I think he's going to he's gonna love this game, man. He's finally going to be able to play it at something other than my house. And... Um, I'm, I'm just genuinely looking forward to this and I think it's a really good thing as I said when Xbox, the Xbox version and the PS4 version released I am genuinely excited to see how the console versions of these play out. The fact that Flying Tiger are actually porting the game slightly differently depending on which system they're actually porting it to um, does actually give me a lot of confidence actually uh, with regards to the stability. You, re you guys will remember that back when the PS4 version was announced I was kind of doubting Flying Tiger's credibility credibility as a developer as it were just purely because that I they hadn't really got like a professional resume they mainly focused on mobile games but this definitely shows that they do take an interest in the product that they're making and it does show that they are actually caring for the systems unlike some recent ports such as zombie uh, that was just a lazy port to PC because it still had all the, the console button prompts and everything that was another example of a lazy port but by the sounds of things KSP to all three platforms that it's going to, Xbox One, PS4, and Wii U. It sounds like it's not going to be a lazy port. Who knows, it may release still in a buggy state and everyone's going to be really annoyed and... I don't know, 
I don't know, it's literally too early to tell at this point, but at the moment, at least, things are looking very, very good. So let me know in the comments down below, guys, what do you think of this Wii U release? Do you think it's a good release? Personally, I think it's the best console release out of the three. I'm not a Nintendo fanboy or anything, I own an Xbox One, I don't own a Wii U or PS4. But I do think that just because of the gamepad and everything, I do think KSP will play out the most naturally, uh, the most PC-like out of the three out of the uh, three platforms there. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. I would love to hear them as always. Now, our next news story for today is kind of me making up for lost time in the last episode. I was so excited with all the news for 1.1 last week that I actually missed some of it out. I didn't actually see these new parts that were revealed by Porkjet until after I was already uploading the first episode of K the KSP News Show, which was last Sunday. That's why this episode is a little bit earlier, not all also because of the Wii U, obviously, but um, this is also why this episode is a little bit earlier than usual. It's been uploaded on the Friday rather than the Sunday. I may do an episode on Sunday, depends on what comes out on Squadcast, but Porkjet um, did actually leave a link um, in a forum post about 1.1, revealing all of the new features and stuff like that that I revealed on last week's show. If you haven't seen that, go check it out. Um, he did actually leave a link in the said article uh, uh, to an Inger album with some new parts in it. I'll leave a link to the description down below if you want to see the whole thing. Um, but I'm just going to pop the images up on screen for you now. If you want to see the full quality, like I say, uh, follow the link in the description down below. And um, these are the new parts. So first up we have the new Mark 1 cockpit and crew cabin. We've already shown this screenshot off on the... Um, on the last week's KSP News Show, but this has a caption. It says the cockpit and all other Mark 1 parts have been overhauled and now fit the game art style better. Also, a new two Kerbal crew cabin has been added. So this basically confirms what I said, what I was predicting on uh, on last week's KSP News Show, which is that the crew cabin will be a two-person cabin and that basically the it's been replaced, the cockpit's been replaced. I already said that, but never mind. Okay, so next we have the uh, front-on view uh, with the concept art of the uh, of the Mark One cockpit. This is just like the original sketches, really, before they were actually turned into a model. In this next screenshot, you can see both the Mark One inline and the new Mark One nose cone and crew cabin cockpits with lights on. Um, obviously, the Mark Two and Mark Three variants of the uh, of the space plane parts. I do have this ability to have the lights turned on, but I don't believe the Mark 1 inline had it as of 1.0. I think it was more designed just as a plain cockpit. But now, obviously, it's been added into the game with the new cockpits um, being added in and stuff. So that's very, very nice. It looks very, very cool. Uh, it looks very, very similar to Mark 1, Mark 2 parts. So nothing particularly special that I've shown off so far. Nothing that we haven't seen already. But this is the kicker here. The new Mark 1 intake fuselage. It says in the caption, it used to be a bit puny. The design did not make good sense, good, good use of the integration into the fuselage. Now it's now it got it's got the design of a divertless supersonic intake, something which can't be done with surface detached intakes. Now I think this just looks amazing. I mean, look at this thing. It looks so nice. I can see this being like part of a fuselage. Um, of a of a normal plane and having the intake sort of like slung underneath sort of I don't know F-18 style I don't know if an F-18 actually has an un under slung intake, but it just looks in generally badass And I'm so glad that they've actually uh, overhauled the uh, the intake because it used to have a tiny little intake on the top there My voice just cracked. Oh dear. I think I should move on to the next one and so here we have the next part here. It is the Mark III cargo ramp. People have been crying out for a cargo ramp in Kerbal Space Program forever, especially since the Mark III parts have actually been released. Now this one has a nice little ramp on it. You can see the moving image here. I'm not sure if you'll be able to see the actual moving image or if I'll just give you the still. But um, you can see it actually opens. It has an extendable ramp, so you'll be able to drive rovers up into cargo bays, and you'll be able to make cool little uh, C-130 analogs of planes. Very, very nice model, nice animation as well, and of course people have been crying out for this for 
forever, pretty much, so its addition into the game is well wanted. Next up, we have the Vector Space Shuttle main engine. Now, a lot of people are going to be happy about this. It says in the caption, I see your attempts at clipping mainsails and skippers into Mark III shuttles and raise you, and raise you this alternative. Stats are subject to balancing and may change in the release version. Now, this looks amazing. Look at the modeling on this thing. It's, um, it's just beautiful. This is, I think this is probably the most detailed part we have in Kerbal Space Program at the moment. Just look at all the lovely textures and lighting and all that sort of thing. And of course this thing can actually be vectored and gimbaled to a certain angle um, in order to, uh, in order to look like a space shuttle engine, which just looks incredible. It does look so much like the space shuttle engines. And this is an incredible engine. Look at this thing. It's going to have roughly the same sort of thrust at the moment as a skipper, a skipper engine, although like he says, this uh, this may be subject to change in the future. Next up, we move on to the new and overhaul jet engines. So of course we start off with the stock ones, the Weasley and the Whiplash. As you can probably see, they don't look anything like the ones that we have at the moment in 1.0. These things look completely different. The caption says, their appearance changed quite a bit and now actually represent their performance. Weasley being a subsonic cruising turbofan as seen on airliners, Whiplash a turbo ramjet similar to the J-58 as seen on the Blackbird, except our version comes in a typical space white finish. Now, I just love these models. Again, Porkjet does such a good job at modeling different parts and stuff like that. Just look at the amazing, the amazing like sort of texturing on these things. Another thing that I really, really like, particularly with the uh, with the Whiplash engine, um, is the new variable geometry. You're going to see that in the new Panther jet engine, which I will show you in a second. But you can see the black end of the... Uh, of the jet engine there you can see like sort of like interchanged web slats and this is to aid um, the direction of thrust when you are actually uh, thrusting the engine it's sort of like a gimbal on a rocket except this is obviously with a jet uh, propulsion which is kind of obvious bearing in mind it's a jet engine but a lot of fighter jets and stuff use this sort of thing to help um, help them turn a lot easier. And so this, the fact that this little sort of like animation has been added into KSP is just awesome. And they, they're gonna they're gonna show it in action with the uh, with the next Panther uh, jet engine, the new one, which I will show you right about now. So here we can see the new Panther size one engine. You can see in the four images here how the variable geometry actually works. There is a GIF coming up which I'll put on screen about now as well. If a GIF doesn't work then I'll probably just film the screen or something like that. And the caption says, your typical fighter jet engine features a wide thrust vectoring range, variable geometry nozzle and an afterburner. I'm going to be interested to see how that actually plays out fills the performance gap between the turbo ramjet and basic jet engine and is more acrobatic than both. Visually it somewhat resembles the old basic jet engine and its performance prior to point 90. So I just love this engine. I If I put this gif on the screen by, like back then you'll be able to see just how awesome it looks with the afterburner and the variable geometry and everything. It's all the particle effects and the animations and stuff in this in these new parts just so well done. I can't I well, as you can probably tell, I really can't find the words to describe them. They are just awesome. And that it doesn't stop here. We have yet more new parts. We have the Goliath Size 2 High Pass Turbo, High Bypass Turbo Fan. This is the big one, boosting massive thrust at subsonic speeds. Comes with a complete intake plus nacelle plus pylon configuration, but can also be stack attached, which is rather unorthodox for such an engine, but we know you like to build unorthodox things. And so also, Porkjet has given us a demonstration gif of how this thing will attach. It sort of seems like the, uh, the part actually changes slightly when you attach it in a stack. Um, so that it actually becomes flush with the body and that's just really cool. I mean, it means that we can build aircraft such as the one being demonstrated with a big jet engine sort of like incorporated into the actual aircraft itself and that just looks generally awesome. And it also makes the adapters, or sort of, I think it makes the adapters look kind of nice. Uh, before I've actually thought like the Mark, Mark II parts do like the 2.5 meter adapters and the 3.3.75 meter adapters they just look kind of ugly, really, but now I I think that they they uh, they have an actual use. 
and they actually look really, really nice indeed. And um, I'm interested to see what actually, um, what people can make with these because I think it is going to look generally very, very badass. Again, the modeling is very, very nice. Looks pretty much identical to an to a jet engine that you'd find on an airliner and I think these these uh, jet engines are mainly designed for large 3.75 meter airliner designs basically but yeah guys that's pretty much it for the actual new parts let me know in the comments down below what you actually think of them but aside from that that's pretty much going to round it off for this week's KSP news show guys I'm sorry if I have sounded a little bit stuttery and a little bit more like bleh than normal it's because obviously i'm doing this at like half eight in the morning and that's far too early for my brain to even function properly but i just thought i needed to get this video out for you guys because these things are awesome and you guys need to know about them if you haven't known about them already so yeah remember to like and subscribe if you did enjoy and you want more from me um i'm probably gonna have a couple more videos out in the next week or so it's just i am working a lot the next coming week and i start my i have my freshers day at college next friday so um videos may be decreased a little bit from here on out although like i said in one of my videos uh coming up um, I will still be up uploading as often as I possibly can. I will still be getting KSP news out as often as I can. Just I have college coming up and all that sort of thing. So I'm probably going to be concentrating on that and taking that as a priority. But yeah guys, remember to like and subscribe for more. And as always, this is Jin Lee Kerman signing off. Stay classy.